Welcome back everybody to another episode of What If. In today's video, we will be talking about what if Robert Whittaker were to go in there and defeat Israel, the last stylebender of Adesanya. How could he do it and who would he fight afterwards? We will be talking about all of that in today's video, so be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Now with that being said, let's jump right into the video. Let's start off with how Adesanya could lose to Robert Whittaker. Now looking at all of the advantages that Robert Whittaker has, or let's just say some things that will play in his favor against Adesanya. To start things off, I would have to say that speed, when it comes to speed, footwork and hand speed and combination punching, that is just something that will have to lean towards Robert Whittaker's favor. In a fight where it is just probably going to end up being a 500 fight where I'm not really expecting either Adesanya or Robert Whittaker to knock one another out, even though that Robert Whittaker has a way more likely chance of knocking out Adesanya than Adesanya has over Whittaker. So keeping that knockout factor intact in this matchup is going to be very important because in a five rounder fight, it really is going to come down to maybe those tough situations where both fighters will have to pull through very hard to just go in there and get the job done. And when it comes to Robert Whittaker, I would have to say that if he really tends to go in there and pull through, and the same has to be applied for um, Adesanya, I would have to say that Robert would probably come out of that the more devastating fighter. Now, besides the knockout punch, obviously, and the speed, I think that when it comes to speed in this matchup, it's going to be something that Robert Whitaker is going to be one of a kind in. Israel Adesanya, in most of his opponents, he hasn't really fought anybody with great footwork, great speed, and just all around explosiveness that Robert Whitaker has. So when Robert goes in there and fights somebody like Adesanya, who's a pretty patient fighter, who likes to fight on the outside, measure his distance, the ability to go in there and close the distance in a burst and chain up combinations together is really going to be something that will, in my opinion, catch Adesanya off guard. Now, will Adesanya at some point in this matchup get a read on that and just figure it out? That will just be something that we will have to wait and see come fight night. But up until now, it was only really Kelvin that was able to go in there, close distance, and really just hit the target. And why was he able to do that? Kelvin, if you take a look at him, stylistically speaking, he's a very smooth fighter that is able to just slip his ad on the outside, come in, and stay in the range where he's able to hit the opponent, throw a signature combination, and then get out. And he's very good at just masking that certain attack with other shots, leg kicks, fake takedown attempts, everything to that extent. He's very good at just really hiding it and then just coming in and still make it a surprise. When it comes to Robert Whittaker, he's very good at doing that also, but in a different manner. He's more so explosive than Calvin Gastelum, whereas Calvin Gastelum is a pretty smooth fighter that will calmly, calmly get in the range and slowly creep up on you. Robert Whittaker is a pretty fast guy and he will just go in there and be there right in front of you all of a sudden. And against a taller opponent, that is going to be very important to do because if he's not able to go in there, find his reach and hit the target, then pretty much at that long range, Adesanya is going to have his way against him. Adesanya is very tricky. He has a lot of feints. He has a lot of hip movements, foot feints, sets up a shot usually pretty well. He really rarely will go for a shot that is just out of the blue, right? That will just go there. He always has some sort of a setup for it. And once he's fairly sure, fairly certain, then he will go in there and attack. So against Adesanya's thinking game, waiting game, I'm pretty sure that the style that Robert Whitaker has, the ability to go in there and be very versatile with his attacks, it is really going to be playing in his favor, right? He has his kicks. He has great defense to not, I mean, I think he has pretty underrated defense. He's a person that will rarely get a hit. He gets somebody like Yoel Romero. Obviously, Yoel Romero is a way more explosive fighter than Robert Whitaker himself is. So the fact that he got caught against him, you know, it shouldn't really be coming at you as a surprise. Now, other than that, Whitaker has always been a very good fighter at taking care of himself inside the ring. He doesn't really take a lot of punishment usually. So against somebody like Adesanya, who is very long and lanky, the probability of him generating such speed and power like Yoel Romero did, it is very unlikely. So in that regard, I don't think there has to be anything to be worrying about on Whitaker's side. Now, if he can be a fighter that can go in there and not really fight in the manner at which usually all of Adesanya's fights have played out in the UFC and make Adesanya fight his fight also, I think that he can have a very brilliant chance of going in there and winning by even TKO. But in my opinion, most likely it will be by a unanimous decision if he were to win. Now, assuming that he defeated Adesanya, who could he fight next? <laughs> 
In a division where currently I would have to say there are two outstanding contenders in Jared Conanier and Paulo Costa. These two, however, are in a pretty good position in terms of rankings and in terms of momentum. However, getting yourself a title shot right now for either fighter, it is a bit of a stretch. Jared came off of a great win against Hermanson and Costa came off of a great win against Romero. Now, for both fighters, I don't want to be like, you know, bringing them down, but against Romero, Romero came off of a loss. So you going in there and beating somebody that just lost to Whitaker, it doesn't really yell out, I'm next. For Jared, yes, he did beat Hermanson, which was a guy that just had some steam behind him. And you go in there and beat that guy, pretty good on your behalf as well. But nobody just is in line just yet. So in my opinion, for Jared Conanier and Paula Costa to go in there and, and at least fight Whitaker in this scenario, at least, they would have to fight one another. So I'll briefly talk about how that fight with either Conanier and Paula Costa would turn out against Robert Whitaker. Now, Robert Whitaker going into a fight with Paula Costa, he is going to be facing literally a brick wall. However, that is not something that is uncharted territories for Robert Whitaker. He obviously went in there and survived two fights and beat Yoel Romero in two fights. So going in there and fighting somebody like Paula Costa, who is, I would say, a less well-rounded version of Yoel Romero, I would have to say it is really only going to be ticking maybe a round or two for Robert Whitaker to find his own rhythm, find his own pacing, and get the better of Paulo Acosta. Now, Acosta being this powerhouse, it is all fun and well, but it is not really going to be in your favor carrying all that muscle mass into the third, fourth, and fifth round. And in those rounds, I would have to believe that Robert Whitaker is really going to be picking up some steam, getting everything rolling, and virtually just beating him to the punch. That is just really briefly just overhauling how I think that fight will be playing out. And in my opinion, I do believe that Jared Conanier will put up a lesser of a fight against Robert Whitaker, and I do believe that Robert Whitaker will be beating him a bit more convincingly. Now, that is a pretty vague, but I don't want to stretch this out too long. Now, aside from those two, we're obviously having a Calvin Gastelum versus Darren Till fight. Now, whether Darren Till goes in there and defeats Calvin Gastelum, he is probably not going to be getting a title shot. So, I'm going to be scrapping Darren Till in this conversation, and I will mainly focus on Calvin Gastelum against Robert Whitaker. Now, obviously, it's a fight that has been scrapped off, and we were once thrilled to see it. So if Calvin Gastelum can go in there and defeat Darren Till in a pretty good fashion, that fight is probably next in line, in my opinion. Now, in this matchup, I would have to favor Robert Whitaker to win once again. And seemingly in these matchups, man, Robert Whitaker is just the guy that it will be coming out on top in most of them. But really, that is only a prediction, obviously, in the end. But taking a look at it, against Calvin Gastelum, who has really, in the middleweight division at least, has fought numerous fighters that were at the tail end of their careers. And essentially, the only real fighter of youth that he fought was the guy that was able to beat him. Now, given the fact that it was obviously Israel Adesanya, who was a tremendous striker we could somewhat forgive him for that but really against Robert Whitaker who is a bit more of a complete fighter than he himself is obviously Calvin Gastelum plus given the strength speed and agility I would have to say that in the grand scheme of things whether or not Calvin Gastelum is going in there and at least landing his signature shots a few times that is not going to be enough in my opinion for him to win the entire fight because in this matchup the abilities that at least Robert Whitaker has and keeping the distance, leg kicking, the jabs, everything in between is just something that is just a lot more than what Calvin Gaston can do to Robert. And in that sense, being the more complete fighter, it is really going to be playing in his favor. Because at some point, Calvin Gastelum pretty much will show all of his tricks, all of his cards. And at that point, once he has done that, he will still be in there. Robert Whitaker will still be in the fight. I highly doubt that he will get knocked out by Calvin Gastelum. Because he's not a 36-year-old retiring um, Tim Kennedy or Michael Bisping. He's able to go in there and take these shots. He has done it against Yoel Romero. And I highly doubt that Calvin is going to be the guy to knock him out. So, in the sense of making it a competitive fight in the first two rounds, sure, Calvin Gastelum will probably have his way. But other than that, in the later stages of the fight, and I believe this is Robert Whitaker's greatest strength, being able to go in there and just adapt and adapt and adapt and overcome time in and time out, that is something that, in my opinion, Calvin Gastelum is not going to be having all too much, given the fact that his stamina is already not really where it should be against a fighter like Robert Whitaker. So, by the end of it, Neither do I expect Robert Whitaker to knock out Calvin Gastelum, but 
at least I do expect them to win. Whether it is by a unanimous decision or a split decision, I would have to say that a decision of victory would be highly in Robert Whittaker's favor over Calvin Gastelum. But in the end, this is only what if Robert Whittaker defeats Israel the last stylebender Adesanya. I will also make a video where I talk about Adesanya defeating Robert Whittaker and what would be next for him. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. As always guys, in the end, only time will tell what will happen. For now, I have been Keenan from Keenan KTV, signing off. Later.